Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Kyle. I talk about cameras, photography, and all that good stuff. Today's video is a lens review on the Makey 25 millimeter F 1.8 APS-C lens for Sony E-mount. This lens comes in a ton of different mounts, but this review is specifically shot on my Sony A6100, so all example photos are on that camera. Full disclosure, Makey did send me this lens for free to review, but like with all of my lens and product reviews, the company doesn't tell me what to say. It's all my own opinion and just my own thoughts through my experience using the product. So if I haven't said already, this is a manual lens, meaning there is no autofocus. There's no way for the lens to talk to the camera and do the autofocus wizardry that we all know and love. Manual lenses have a nice thing and that is that they are usually smaller and they are a lot cheaper. I did a review on a Makey 35 millimeter f1.7 many years ago. I will put the link to that video on the screen and in the description below. I did three lenses under $100. This lens also falls into that category, so it is sub $100, and I think you really get a great performance for a sub $100 lens. So this lens, the 25 millimeter F1.8 by Makey is $74.99, so a nice price point, and I think, and hopefully you think by the photos I show you, it gives great performance for that $75 price point. What's interesting is the 35 millimeter F1.7, which I reviewed before by Makey, is a little bit cheaper at $70, so you save five bucks, but it's a different focal length, so it's all according to what you're looking for. And to those wondering, 25 millimeters is equivalent full frame to 37.5 millimeters. And if you're wondering what I'm shooting on right here, it's the Viltrox 23 millimeter F1.4 at f1.4, which the Makey can't do, but this focal length that you're seeing right now is similar to what the Makey is. So it's, you know, a very eye-friendly, what you actually see in real life lens. Another thing I found interesting is I've done actually a different review on a 25 millimeter f1.8 by Pergear. I love Pergear's lenses. They are usually very solid in construction and all that and their 25 millimeter is 70 bucks. So it's slightly cheaper than Makey's. So I have a couple example photos to show you guys comparing the two. Before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about the Makey 25 millimeter F1.8, its build quality, its focus ring, and its aperture ring. So one thing that I like about Makey and I like about some other lens companies is when they really put the effort in for the build quality and everything like that. And Makey has the rear lens cap. It's their own brand. It has a little uh, indicator here where it actually opens and locks and it says Sony E-mount, just a nice touch. And same thing on the front lens cap, it says Makey there. So, you know, it's actual Makey branded front and rear lens caps. The front lens cap is just basically a pull off. There's no twist or anything like that. And it just sits right back on there. And it's actually very snug. I was very surprised because it's very shallow. There's not a lot for it to grab on, but it doesn't fall off surprisingly. As far as the lens construction, and everything like that, I really like the way this, is, this lens is built. Both the aperture ring and the focus ring are very, very smooth. They have just a great feel to them. And I also like the ridges on the focusing ring. Um, they are really nice touch. One thing to note is that the aperture ring is not clicked. So it's a declicked aperture ring. And one thing I've noticed lately is as I keep reviewing manual lenses, I really liked a clicked aperture ring like TT Artisan does that with some of theirs. So I really hope more lens manufacturers like Makey, Per Gear, Seven Artisans and things like that go with a clicked aperture ring. But I know video shooters like a declicked, but it would be nice if you had the option that would be cool. This is really a tiny lens, like a lot of other manual lenses in this focal range, you know, 25 millimeters, 35 millimeters, and they're perfect for street photography, for walk around photography, travel photography, really just kind of everyday stuff. Um, you know, I could do a lot of photos of my pets and things like that. And this lens is kind of perfect for that. Um, it's small and yeah, I like it. The box that this lens comes in is white and has, you know, pretty good branding on it. And on the one side, it has these specifications, which is nice. So the lens is a prime lens, meaning that it's a fixed focal length. The lens, lens structure, five groups, seven elements. Maximum aperture is f1.8. So you get a very nice bokeh with this lens. 
Focus mode is manual focus, which we went over. Focal length, 25 millimeters. Minimum focusing distance, which is nice, is 0.25 meters, which is closer than its 35 millimeter brother, which is very nice. Minimum aperture is F16. The 35 millimeter actually goes down to F22, so that's something of note. And then the last thing is the diameter and length, which are stated there. Just to give you an idea of the size of this little guy, I put on the screen here a comparison between, I believe, the Sigma 30 millimeter, the TT Artisan 35 millimeter F1.4, and then the Per Gear 25 millimeter, and then this, the Makey 25 millimeter. So just to give you an idea of the size of this thing, a lot of these manual focus lenses are a little smaller, which is very nice, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how it looks compared to other lenses. On the camera, it looks great. It looks like it fits perfectly well with the Sony A6000 lineup of cameras, and I really like the look of Makey lenses. So besides nice build quality and overall just really good image quality, one thing that I think this lens has really going for it is this multi-coated, which they have on the box here in different colors and everything, and it's all over the branding, this multi-coated lens element and things like that. And they're actually not lying. I wasn't going to do a bunch of comparison shots, but it just so happened I had a lens that was so close to this, being 25 millimeters f1.8 from per gear so i took a couple shots with each lens and i'm gonna put them on the screen you guys take a second to look at them and think about this multi-coating thing and then pick which one is the per gear and then pick which one is the makey lens and i think you'll be able to tell the difference so the one on the right is the makey and the one on the left is the per gear and the real big difference is that fog that kind of glare is a lot less prevalent in the Makey side versus the Per Gear. And that's really because the coating of the lens. I mean, you see this all the time in like a lens description, like it's multi-layer coating and then big scientific words and things like that. I'm not so well versed in like the technical aspects of the lens design, but you know, you can test it versus other lens like the Per Gear and you can see the improvement that is had in image quality. So overall in images that I've compared between the two lenses, the Per Gear and the Makey, the Makey just has a better picture quality than the Per Gear because of this coating. And you know, daylight scenarios when the sun is off to the side or it's behind your subject, you're just going to have an overall, in my opinion, more clear, and overall, in the end, sharper photo. And here's the thing too, is I like that per gear lens. I still stand by my review on that lens. I really like it. I like the vintage kind of feel of it. And maybe if you're going for more of a dreamy look, something that has a little bit of that image quality to it, go with the per gear. But if you want a cleaner image, and I think a little bit sharper, you can go with the Makey. I actually forgot to mention when I was recording the video that there is some barrel distortion with this lens. As you can see in the photo here, uh, you can see when you have straight lines in a photo like this shelf here, you're gonna see some bends. So just something to be aware of. It's not like egregious or anything, but I forgot to include it in the video. So here it is. Overall, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in my recommendations of lenses under $100 that you should scope out for the Sony A6000 lineup or if you have, you know, any of the other cameras that this lens is supported for. Keep in mind, manual focus does take some practice. So if this is maybe a, a lens that you're looking at getting, upgrading from your kit lens, um, it's gonna be great for that because the F1.8 is gonna allow better low light than your kit lens. It is sharper than the kit lens when you nail focus though. And that's the tough part is getting used to the manual focus, use focus peaking and all that. But I'll show you a couple of photos here. I do miss from time to time. It's it's hard to do manual focus and especially with like moving subjects and things like that. If you're looking for a nice sub hundred dollars, faster, cool street photography prime, this might be the one for you, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments of the example photos and maybe how it compares to other lenses that you may own. If you guys are interested in picking up this nice little budget lens, affiliate links in the description. Also put the link to the Per Gear review in the description if you wanna check that lens out. And yeah, big thanks to Makey for sending me this lens to review. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Later.